Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and I make weekly videos about making candles at home. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a video and give this video a thumbs up. In today's video, I want to talk about how to calculate the correct burn time of your candles. So not only is this super important for marketing purposes, so when eventually you go ahead and sell your candles, you can give your customers the information that they need on how long that candle is going to burn for, but also it's just super important that any candle maker knows exactly how long their candles are burning for. This video is a little bit controversial because there are two ways of how you can calculate the test burn time of your candles and one is highly recommended because it's the quickest way to do so. It involves some maths but again it's the quickest way to do so yet it's probably one that isn't going to be very accurate for your candles and I know this because I have tried it so many different times and I got a different result from each calculation despite the candles all being from the same batch. And the second way of calculating the test burn time of your candles is by going down the old school route of literally burning your candle, blowing it out, burning your candle, blowing it out, and making sure you record how long your candle burns for during that time. And then you basically repeat that process until your candle has completely burnt out. So first of all, I'm simply just going to go over the way that I test burn my candles myself, how I get that calculation. And that is going down the old school route, I'm afraid. So first of all, grab yourself a candle. This is a used candle, but you do need a brand new candle. Um, and make sure your wick is cut to quarter of an inch. You're then going to light your candle and leave it to burn until it reaches its full melt pool. And full melt pool is basically where your candle has burnt completely to the edges. So once it has reached full melt pool, you then need to blow your candle out and leave it to harden up. Once your candle has hardened up, you then need to repeat that process of burning the candle, making sure that the wick is the correct size before you burn it, and then again, leave it to reach the full melt pool and then blow it out. And each time you do those steps, you need to record exactly how long it took your candle to reach full melt pool. A really, really important part of this step is making sure that your candle is super hard. So hard as if it hasn't been burnt for days. Otherwise, you're just going to get a really inaccurate result. And also, you need to make sure that your candle has reached full melt pool before you blow it out. Otherwise, you're going to experience tunneling and whatnot. And it's just going to, again, give you a less accurate and also less best, less best, <laughs> a least best result for your candle. At the end of the day, we want to get the best burn time calculation for our candle. So once you've done that, you then need to work out the calculation. So for example, say you burnt your candle for two hour intervals. It took two hours for your candle to reach full melt pool um, and you burnt it for 25 times. You then basically need to take that 25, the 25 burn times and times it by two, which is 50. And that is going to give you a 50 hour burn time for your candle. I would suggest taking three candles made from the same batch, test burning them, taking down all the calculations from that, and then taking the average from those candles. Of course, calculations are slightly going to differ, so that just gives you an average based on the same candles from the same batch. I hope that makes sense. So while that is probably the most long-winded way of getting the calculation of your candle burn time, it is going to give you the most accurate one rather than the partial burn test method, so, which I really don't recommend, but this is my own personal opinion. So let me just talk about that more in detail. So when I started my candle making journey, 
I went down the route of doing the partial burn test method to work out the calculations of my candle burn time. So the partial burn test method is the quickest way to basically calculate the test burn time of your candle. It involves a lot of math calculations. So essentially you weigh your candle at the start of the process and then you burn it. And then at the end of that, you then take another measurement of the weight of your candle. And then you divide that by how much how much wax was consumed during that time. But then a lot of companies and candle makers suggest that you don't weigh the container of your candle, which then makes it a little bit more complicated. So when I started using that formula, every single time I burnt my candle from the same batch, so I probably did about three or four candles using the partial test burn method, I got a completely different calculation on every single one of them. And again, as I said at the beginning of the video, I went back to the forums and groups that I was a part of, and a lot of people just recommended going down the old school route of sitting there with your candle, technically not sitting there, burning your candle and then just recording the hours and writing that down and then testing that through two or three candles from the same bat. And again, as well with the partial test burn method, there are just so many different things that can happen when you burn your candle. And I just think the partial test burn method isn't the most accurate way. And again, these websites do state that in there. And I think if you are looking to sell your candles, you want to know exactly how your candle burns. And personally, I would just want to know how much my candle burns itself. And I know because I sat there and I tested it. <laughs> so essentially finding out the calculation for your candle test burn time is really easy, unless you want to go down the candle math route. If you're curious, I would recommend doing both methods. So doing the old school method of burning it and writing down and then burning it again, writing it down, um, and then do the partial burn test method. I think honestly, if you are so confident in your candles and the partial burn test method, I know it works for some people. If you're so confident in your candles, then I would suggest going down that route if it makes it quicker for you. But I think with candle making, where there is so much time involved, so much experimenting and so much testing, I just think if you can, spend so long making your candles then you should be also be able to spend so long testing them as well and also I just think when you are testing you when you are burning your candles even you should be tracking your candle as well when it burns so I also think that calculating its burn test time shouldn't be that much more effort involved if you're already taking notes on your candle when it's burning anyway. I hope that makes sense. If you do want any more details about the partial test burn method, I will put the calculations below that I used myself. <laughs> I am saying to you now, I didn't get an accurate result every single time I tried it. So if you're asking me, I would say to go down the old school route and just burn it yourself and write down exactly how long it took and how many burns it took you to completely burn through the candle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Even if you found it helpful, it really helps to support my channel. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly videos. If you have any video recommendations, please pop them in the comments below. I honestly look at every single comment, so I will definitely take note of anything you want to see in future. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.